We had Allah with us as well. I spoke to Adil. He said Allah was definitely with us. Yeah, mashallah and all that, yeah, but at least get the tajweed right, you know what I mean? Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to a Cricket World Cup special of Smart to Jannah. Smart to Jannah. <laughs> England have won the WC in cricket. What? The toilet? Nah, mate. The World Cup. And it was a tense final against New Zealand. Well, technically it wasn't England that won, it was England and Wales and the Commonwealth as well, seen as England's got some players from Barbados, New Zealand and uh, Ireland. It's a game that needs patience and class. So I guess that leaves the United States out of it and uh, probably half of the population. And that's why cricket is not that popular with the youth. Obviously, when I'm saying that, I don't mean this guy. No. Yes! Yes! That's, that's a bit too much, yeah? I mean, you had very unlikely people celebrating the cricket victory. I mean, hey, you got Gatwick Airport. From the top, they look like a giant bullseye. God damn it, Gatwick. Having a giant bullseye on an airport when you're picking fights with countries like Yemen and Iran is just not a very wise idea, you know what I mean? And you got mugs like the Brexiteer Jacob Reese Smog, who used the victory, who pushed forward his agenda of just Brexit and the fact that we don't need Europe. I mean, we haven't even left the European Union yet. That's the first thing. And the second thing is there's not a single European country that's got a cricket team. Let's look at some responses of the people. Absolute class A mate. Our director of cricket until last year was South African. Our current coach is Australian. Our current captain is Irish. Our super over bowler is Barbadian. We're captained by an immigrant. Batting led by an immigrant. Fastest bowler an immigrant. Leading all round an immigrant, main spinner, son of an immigrant. Even Tommy Robinson's very own Luton, which has been called a no-go zone for non-Muslims, was celebrating like this. Yeah! I haven't seen them this happy since the last Mela, mate. And Luton had more England flags than the bedroom of the Prime Minister of Israel. And you can tell it's Luton because of the amount of brown sellotape used mate. Classic. And the fact that they've got a wedding car hire and an umbrella on the same road. And the flag, might I interject, is called St George's flag. And St George, historians say, was a Palestinian. Yeah, that's right, a Palestinian who had never set foot in England. Did you guys know that there are two practicing Muslim people in the English cricket team. Yeah, with long beards mate, possibly even longer than mine. Now here is my favourite clip where they're just about to celebrate and the rest of the team is about to pop open a bottle of bubbly and as they do that, these two scarper mate. Yeah, they do a, a quick swift exit, lovely jubbly. But now nah, it's quite interesting because this is the difference between a practicing Muslim and a Muslim by name because these two could have just stood there and started debating and said Brother, the alcohol is not from dates so according to the opinion it is permissible. Brother, it is not being consumed eh? and because we use creams that have alcohol so no problem brother. It's okay, we can do this, no problem. No nonsense, alcohol, haram, less cut mate, you know what I mean? I mean even the captain of England had this to say Played a role. Do you think the luck of an Irishman got England over the line? <laughs> we had Allah with us as well. I spoke to Adil. He said Allah was definitely with us. Yeah, mashallah and all that, yeah, but at least get the tajweed right, you know what I mean? Like, it's not very difficult to pronounce. I'm sure you did RE in school, yeah? Actually epitomises our team. It's quite diverse backgrounds and cultures and guys grow up in different countries and... and... I mean, if Tommy Robinson was not in prison, right in a way, He'd probably have something to say about this, yeah? There is one other point which I was quite worried about which is the level of entertainment is on the rise to such a degree that on Sunday guys you had cycling, you had tennis, you had racing and cricket on the same day such that you had mugs like this. 
I mean with multiple screens. It's like the Roman Colosseum keeping the people distracted so the rulers can do whatever they want. When it comes to stuff like this, don't get me wrong, yeah? Just watch the highlights, you know what I mean? But don't go over the top and let sport consume your life such that you start neglecting your friends and your family and interfacing with people. Alright, Jazakallah Khair, hopefully you guys benefited. Until next time, Asalaamu Alaikum.